Have you ever wondered about the mysteries of the universe? What structure does it have? What are black holes, dark energy, and dark matter? What caused the Big Bang? How does quantum mechanics work? Our universe is vast and complex, with billions of galaxies spanning unimaginable distances. For centuries, modern scientists have been trying to understand the universe's structure. In ancient Greece, philosophers like Pythagoras believed that the universe was a perfect sphere, with Earth at its center. This geocentric model was used by astrological and astronomical charts for over 1,500 years. In the early 20th century, Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity revolutionized our understanding of space and time. According to Einstein, space is not a flat, two-dimensional plane, but a curved, four-dimensional space-time fabric that can be warped by the presence of matter and energy. Our understanding of the universe has taken many leaps forward since then. With the progression of satellite technology and GPS, we have seen how general relativity can be directly applied to our everyday lives. The clocks on every satellite are adjusted based on the difference in gravity's effect, which changes clock speeds between the Earth's surface and the satellite orbit. The equations for general relativity calculate that difference with incredible accuracy. Without it, GPS would lose usefulness quickly. With the construction of colliders like the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, we have been able to break down atoms and see evidence of subatomic particles. Smashing atoms together at nearly the speed of light also recreates some of the conditions that were present near the Big Bang, giving us quantitative data to apply to mathematic theories. This firmly solidifies our understanding of them with real-world demonstrations and measurements. The particles of the standard model have been measured in these conditions. The Higgs particle was recently discovered, the last particle needed to be detected to complete the standard model. From theoretical physics came the theories of strings, loops, and superstrings. According to these theories, our universe emerged from higher dimensional space, with the extra dimensions being compactified and hidden from view. While it is still an open question, recent research suggests that the universe may have a peculiar shape. The idea of a multiply connected universe, like a torus has been proposed before. Recent measurements of the cosmic microwave background radiation support the idea of a multiply connected universe, which show that the universe may not only be expanding, but also rotating. The cosmic microwave background radiation is a photograph of the universe at around 380,000 years old, and it is nearly perfectly uniform with a factor of one variation in 100,000 data points. Thanks to the CMB, we can more accurately calculate the properties of the third dimension universe, as early as 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the Big Bang. That's a decimal followed by 43 zeros, a tiny fraction of a second. Anything before that approaches infinity and the calculations break. The possibility of another type of multiply connected universe, a set of nested spheres, has gained traction in recent years. Imagine a set of nested spheres, with each layer representing a higher dimension. The surface of the innermost sphere represents our 3D universe, where we live and all normal matter resides. The shape of our universe may be a three-dimensional analog of the surface of a four-dimensional sphere, known as a hypersphere. The surface of this sphere is flat and infinite, and matches the homogeneity and isotropy that we witness in our universe. The middle sphere represents a higher dimension, where the laws of physics are different. This dimension is governed by quantum physics, which is very different from the classical physics that we observe in our third dimension. Finally, the outer sphere represents the highest dimension, where space and time and the laws of physics are different again. Each sphere is expanding into the infinite space-time dimension above it. To help visualize the higher dimensions, a cube is often used. Start with the zeroth dimension with a point. Draw a line to bring it into the first dimension. Draw a square for the second, and then a cube for the third. Where do you go from here though? How do you add the fourth dimension to the drawing? Some believe it would look something like the tesseract, an image that expands the cube into the fourth dimension by expanding each of the cube lines out. Trying to add yet another dimension gets complex and nearly impossible to visualize. Instead of using a square and cube, we can use a circle and sphere. Start with a line, the radius, expand it to a circle, then add depth to make it a sphere. The radius line starts in the center and reaches the edge of the first sphere, the third dimension. As we travel through the fourth dimension of time, we experience time in a straight line. And, in geometry, the fourth dimension is a cut section of the first three, making it a straight line on a graph. So, it stands to reason that the fourth dimension can be represented with a line, by extending the line beyond the third dimension. For our model, we are going to continue the radius line straight beyond the circumference. This line represents the fourth dimension. The fifth and sixth dimension are copies of the second and third, a circle, 
and another sphere. The seventh dimension is another space-time dimension that the second sphere is expanding into. Repeat the steps again to complete the ten-dimensional model. The ninth dimension is the outer sphere, and the tenth dimension is the space-time dimension that it is expanding into. When visualizing the levels of dimensions, we start in the center and work our way out with the zeroth dimension in the center and the tenth dimension around the ninth dimension sphere. When visualizing the analog levels of matter, we start with the outer shell. The outer sphere represents the atomic level. At this level, matter is made up of atoms that are bound together by electromagnetic forces. These forces are responsible for the formation of molecules, which are the building blocks of all the third dimension matter around us. Moving inward, we come to the middle sphere, which represents the quantum level. At this level, particles don't behave like ordinary objects. They can exist in multiple places at once, and their properties are uncertain until measured. Quantum mechanics is the branch of physics that describes the strange behavior of these subatomic particles. Finally, at the innermost level, we have the vibrating strings level. According to string theory, the fundamental building blocks of the universe are not particles, but tiny, one-dimensional strings that vibrate at different frequencies. These vibrations give rise to all the particles and forces in the universe. By understanding the nested hyperspheres and higher dimensions, we may be able to unlock the secrets of black holes, dark energy, and even dark matter, better understand how the universe came to be, as well as the physics behind particle wave duality and quantum entanglement. Let's begin to explore how. Black holes have fascinated scientists and the general public alike for decades, and for good reason. They are among the most mysterious and enigmatic objects in the universe, with the power to warp space and time itself. At the center, lies the singularity, a place with matter so dense that even light cannot escape its event horizon. It turns out black holes may be more significant to the structure of the universe than previously thought. They would have been some of the first astronomical bodies, and may be driving matter downwards in dimensions. As matter falls into a black hole, it creates an expanding second dimension, and as that dimension expands, it pushes on the dimension above it. This may be driving the expansion of our third dimension, explaining the mysterious dark energy. In a recent study in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, scientists used computer simulations to model the behavior of black holes and their influence on the universe. They found that the expansion of another dimension driven by black holes could indeed drive the expansion of the third dimension. In the study, they showed with 99.98% certainty that the two phenomena are connected. Dark energy makes up nearly 70% of all the matter and energy of our universe. Dark matter has been a mystery for a long time. But with this new understanding of higher dimensions, we can start to see how it fits into the bigger picture. The dark matter of the universe can be described by higher dimensional matter, which is interacting with our universe in ways that we cannot directly observe. It has similar properties to normal matter including mass and gravity, but isn't visible or detectable by our current technology or methods. A recently published paper in the The European Physical Journal explored the idea of a fifth warped extra dimension that is wrapped around the fourth dimension, which is in turn wrapped around the third dimension. The theory could explain the mysterious dark matter that makes up much of the universe's mass. Another recent study at Cornell University simulating dark matter, showed that it could create dark atoms and larger atomic structures. Dark matter makes up nearly 30% of the matter and energy in our universe, while the normal matter we can see and interact with or detect accounts for just under 5%. We have a pretty good understanding of how our third-dimensional universe came to be after the Big Bang, thanks to the addition of the theory of cosmic inflation. The Lambda CDM model gives us amazing calculations with matching real-world data, which can describe the universe's earliest 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the Big Bang. But what came before that? Before the Big Bang of our third dimension, there would have been an original Big Bang that brought all 10 dimensions into existence. This would have started as a single point or vibration that expanded into the 10 dimensions with all the lower dimensions intact. According to string theory, our universe emerged from higher dimensional space, with the extra dimensions being compactified and hidden from view. The particles or strings in the tenth dimension vibrated exactly the right way to generate our matter and energy-dominated third dimension. Cosmic inflation expanded the universe exponentially in the first moments after the Big Bang, originally generating a radiation-dominated universe very early on. Then it cooled enough, and particles slowed down enough that matter could dominate, and stars and planets could form. This period of a matter-dominated universe lasted for about 8 billion years. More recently, about 5.5 billion years ago, dark energy has started dominating the universe and has made the universal expansion rate accelerate. 
around 4.6 billion years ago our sun formed and started pulling in the materials to form our solar system. 2.5 billion years ago life started to form in the oceans of a young planet and in just a few hundred million years, the earth had an atmosphere and all the requirements for carbon-based life to flourish. A group of researchers has proposed that the universe simulated itself into existence. There could likely be multiple parallel dimensions, or third-dimensional universes that exist as a result. According to this theory, the third-dimension universe would have gone through many iterations before the current one was formed. These iterations would have involved the universe sparking in and out of existence, sometimes in tiny fractions of a second. On an infinite timeline, any arrangement of particles is possible, so it was only a matter of time before we finally reached an iteration that could support life. What does it mean for the universe to simulate itself into existence? Essentially, it means that the universe is a self-contained system that is capable of creating itself. It's like a computer program that runs on its own, without the need for an external source. Recent research has provided new evidence that supports the idea. The researchers used computer simulations to create a virtual universe that behaves similarly to our own. They found that the virtual universe created subatomic particles just like our universe, and that these particles interacted in ways that were consistent with the laws of physics that we observe. Why stop at 10 dimensions? To help imagine the spheres, it helps to define what would be visible to an ant at each level. For example, imagine an ant walking on a newspaper, this represents the second dimension of length and width only. From the third dimension with height, we can pick up and drop the ant at any location in the second dimension, or fold the newspaper so that the ant can move from one spot to another without ever being in between. Of course, an ant in the third dimension experiences what we experience, existing in the universe we know, traveling through our fourth dimension of space-time. The ant in the sixth dimension would have access to all of the third dimension's space-time and could similarly move from one spot in 3D space-time to any other without ever being in between. This dimension can be viewed as a multiverse, as it would have access to all of our universe's possible timelines and parallels. In the ninth dimension, the ant's perspective would include all of the possible sixth dimensions. Since the sixth dimension already includes all the timelines of our universe, the ninth dimension would include all the timelines of all possible universes across dimensions. This dimension can be viewed as an omniverse, capable of interacting with any 3D space-time or 6D space-time from the dimension above. In order to continue the pattern, there would need to be something above the 10th dimension, but we're already at the level of all possible timelines, in all possible universes, in all possible dimensions. Logically, this is where the model ends. The analog of the model is in reverse order, the outer sphere is the atomic level, the level below that is the quantum particles, and the lowest level is vibrating strings. It is mathematically unlimited, as you could continue layering dimensions forever and they would have mathematical representation. However, the model ends here as there appears to be no real-world analog, or a logical continuation beyond this point. The nested spheres model provides a fascinating thought experiment that helps us understand the concept of higher dimensions beyond our usual 3D space-time. By visualizing these dimensions as layers within nested spheres, we can grasp the idea of an ant in each dimension having a different perspective of the universe. How can our universe have higher dimensions? There doesn't seem to be anything other than forward-back, left-right, up-down, and time. It seems likely that size in the third dimension loses meaning at a certain level, and that quantum particles are below that threshold. At the atomic level, we can detect and view molecules and some atoms. But beyond that, quantum particles appear to be quantized to single points in space, smaller than we're able to observe with the most powerful microscopes, as even light waves are too big and pass right through them. We have yet to actually observe an electron, even though we know they exist. At the most fundamental level, vibrating strings in the 10th dimension make up all the quantum particles in the 6th dimension, which make up all the matter and energy in the universe. The quantum 6th dimension may simply be a subdivision of 3rd dimensional space, where size becomes meaningless at the scale of its particles. It would stand to reason that the ninth dimension is a further subdivision of space beyond what the 6th dimension particles can scale. The ninth dimension divisions would be a Planck scale space-time grid, the smallest known physical scale to be mathematically meaningful. Which means the scale for strings measure 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters, which is many orders of magnitude smaller than subatomic particles. In this way, the framework of the ninth dimension becomes the base of the others, containing the smallest scale of space-time and particles that are physically possible. The sixth, quantum dimension framework is generated from the ninth dimension, the same way our third dimension framework is generated from quantum particles that make up atoms and molecules. 
the tiny Planck units of the ninth dimension are like tiny pixels, or voxels, of our universe. Imagine a computer screen that is zooming in and out of a fractal image. The image of the fractal goes on forever in every direction on the screen, but if you looked closely at the screen itself, it is made up of pixels. How can tenth dimensional strings be one-dimensional? This seems to be a bit of a paradox. What are strings according to string theory? Strings can be open or closed, have tension like rubber bands, and vibrate. They can vibrate in different ways, with more or less ripples. Visualizing a string through its space-time, its world line is a tunnel or a sheet with specific patterns and ripples. These ripples generate all the energy and matter that make up the universe. The laws of physics that govern them are different than our classical physics, or quantum mechanics. Earlier, when describing why the fourth dimension is a continuation of the radius line, it is explained that one of the reasons is that the fourth dimension is a cut section of the first three in geometry. The same can be said about the strings in the tenth dimension. Imagine cutting a fruit straight across, and viewing the circumference of the cut from different angles. In some orientations, the cut would appear to be a straight line to the observer. This is called an open string. In most others, you would see an oval or circle. This is called a closed string. Think of the strings as hair on the sphere of the ninth dimension. Using the nested spheres model, we can see how this can be visually represented. The hair on the ninth dimension sphere is either looped and closed, or straight and open. Exploring the model could help us gain a deeper understanding of strings and how they move, as well as the laws of physics that govern them. We can deduce the behavior of quantum particles like electrons and photons because we can see their effects on our space-time. In the dual-slit experiment, photons and electrons act the same when sent one at a time. The single particle interferes with itself as if it were also in all other probable locations simultaneously. This creates a wave-like behavior. Until it is captured, or observed, the particle location is a cloud of probability. Once it has been observed or measured, its probability wave changes, its behavior changes, and we can measure its properties where it lands. If the particle is sixth-dimensional, it could travel through all probable 3D space-time, all at once. This allows it to be in every other quantum possibility in its superposition which causes it to interfere with itself at the quantum level. This creates the probability wave that it rides. The particle precipitates from the wave in a primary position, which is randomly determined by the probability along the entire path. This gives it a single determined path, or primary superposition in the wave. If the probability wave changes, the primary superposition changes according to the new probability. Their path can be calculated, after they land or by measuring it, to be a straight line through the fabric of space-time from their source. Sometimes they warp through the gravity of massive objects, sometimes they diffuse like a wave, sometimes they bounce off surfaces and scatter. The behavior duality can be explained by the higher dimensions. Quantum particles can become entangled with each other, meaning that the measurement of one determines the measurement of the other. These particles can be at distances that take light time to travel, and yet their measurements happen instantaneously. How do particles that are entangled communicate to each other faster than light? If the quantum particles are governed by the laws of the sixth dimension, they would have access to all 3D space-time, with the ability to move from one space-time to another without ever being in between. If their connection is in the sixth dimension, the distance between them in 3D space-time is irrelevant. By considering the possibility that quantum particles are governed by the laws of the sixth dimension, we gain insight into how their behavior and entanglement can transcend the constraints of 3D space-time. When we talk about infinity, we often think of something that has no end or no boundaries. In the 10-dimension nested spheres model, each sphere is bounded by infinite space-time. This means that while the spheres themselves are finite, the space-time in which they exist is infinite. And expanding. Think of the universe like a balloon, the surface of the balloon represents all of the matter and energy in the universe. As you blow air into the balloon, the surface gets bigger. The concept of the universe being infinite means that it has no end or edge, it goes on forever like the balloon surface or a globe of the Earth. At the same time, the universe is expanding, which means that the distance between galaxies is getting larger and larger. Even as the surface of the spheres expand, so does the infinite space-time around them. We experience the surface of the third-dimensional sphere as an infinite flat plane, which is analogous to how we perceive flatness on Earth's surface, where Euclidean geometry works. Except instead of the 3D sphere surface of Earth, it's a 4D hypersphere surface. Even at its astronomically massive scales, the universe relative to infinity is incredibly close to nothing. Relative to the infinity of the tenth dimension, the entire model of spheres could fit into a single point, or singularity. 
the same could be said about each infinite space-time dimension and the sphere below it. Another way to view a singularity is as a black hole, which would indicate that it is possible that each sphere is inside a black hole of a higher dimension. So, in a very real way, infinity is built into the very fabric of the universe. Each level of reality is nested within the next, and each level is bounded by infinite space-time. This hypothesis is experimentally verifiable. In fact, evidence for compactified higher dimensions has already been discovered and verified thousands of times. Particles at a small size act differently than particles at a large size. The dual slit experiment and similar particle experiments confirm this. Larger molecules move predictably, according to the laws of classical physics and general relativity. Smaller particles like electrons and photons move in a probability wave, and only present as particles when measured, or entangled with the third dimension. They move according to the underlying laws of quantum mechanics. The scale range between the size of molecules and the size of quantum particles like quarks and electrons is several orders of magnitude. But there is a certain point where these behaviors change. If we were to measure the size at which the behavior naturally changes in normal matter, that is the physical barrier between the third and sixth dimension. The barrier between the sixth and the ninth dimension would be several orders of magnitude smaller than that, at the Planck scale. Unfortunately, it's unlikely that we'll be able to see anything that small for a long time, as the collider size needed to see just the quantum scale would be larger than the orbit of Pluto. However, the model is compatible with all of the currently accepted models and theories, including, lambda CDM, classic physics, general relativity, core theory, quantum mechanics, the standard model, quantum field theory, and quantum chromodynamics, among others. M-theory, string and superstring theories, and loop quantum gravity also complement the hypothesis. This makes it both plausible and experimentally verifiable. The nested spheres model is an incredible tool to help visualize how these particles could be interacting with each other. We are potentially living in a beautifully ordered system that expands into different dimensions above, and the shape of the universe may be much more complex than previously thought. By understanding the nested hyperspheres and higher dimensions, we may be able to unlock the secrets of black holes, dark energy, and even dark matter, and understand quantum and classical physics better. The study of cosmology, astrophysics, quantum physics, and theoretical physics aims to understand the mysteries of the universe and the laws that govern it. As Alan Guth said, the universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine.